The lethal hit, Varus. I love to see it for life. Yeah, so same bands as game one, but again, changing up the picks. In game one, it was the first pick of the Twisted Fate. This time, it is the Varus. So I wonder if JDG would still like to go back to something they've done earlier, like the Jax. You know, of course, that can be a flex pick. I like that they're picking up the Rakan early. Of course, this also sets terrifying. up if they want to go for the Zaya or, ooh, the Zeri also, would be a nice shout. Something else, Ruler plays incredibly well. That, and also, Missing had that, like, ridiculous win streak. I think he still is on the win streak on Rakan. I'm not super sure. Maybe somebody can at me on Twitter about it, but I, I remember in the regular season, he was on, like, a ridiculous Rakan win streak every time he picks the champion. So they are going to get a tried and true duo down there. It is going to be the Talia for Xiaohu yet again. So trying to get some of that side lane pressure. Yeah, so going to be more potential for aggression down a bot lane, but also more potential for supports to roam. Uh, considering they are both on these engaged champions. Now the TF is going to come out for JDG. I would okay. assume this is actually going in the top, but of course it is a flex pick, right? They are they, they can decide what they want to do after Weibo do pick up their top lane, but Flandre was has been the much bigger TF player out of him and Yigao. No way that JDG are just going to take a full-on Weibo comp and, and beat them in a third game, right? Like, that's no way they're, they're, that, they're that mean, right? Oh, well, they definitely are. Again, JDG's comp... <laughs> Can still turn into something that can do really well in team fights, right? You get yeah. you get something a bit tankier, a bit you know more beefy in the jungle. You know, I was gonna say Xin Zhao, but obviously him just being taken off the board, things along that lines, and then uh, very easy to round it out with with some high damage in the mid lane. So JDG would not only have pressure insides if they went TF top, but then also have a really strong team fighting core that TF can enable with the destiny. I like the Xin Zhao focus from Weibo. I would expect more of uh, the Kanavi focus, maybe even the Lee Sin being banned away here there it is it is going to be targeting kanavi in this second phase for weibo at least now jdg again will have their counter pick available they still have the potential to utilize that at four top lane if we want to get some of that flexibility for the tf we'll see where their desires lie at least so yep this would set them up to to play more of a pick-oriented comp. Again, still can function in 5v5s, depending on how they round it out and what Weibo pick, but no. <laughs> so they go away from that. Yes, going straight towards the cage. I mean, hell, this is something Yigao has played in the past. Uh, so we're going to see how he's able to do with it here. It's going to be a huge disruption to a mobile champions like Horus and Talia with that cage. You don't need to look to move around. You're just going to press your mid lane and farm up as best you can. And that kind of sets Weibo's sights on that mid lane a little bit more. And maybe not able to play as much around as what they want to do in the side lanes. Really like this read from JDG. It's also something they highlighted earlier, at least the uh, gal hovering it in game number one. The Aatrox lock in for ZDZ. We'll see what Xiao Hao wants to go ahead and pilot in a potential last game for Weibo in the spring split. Yeah, it seems like they're being very conscious about the pressure that Flandre will put up on the Twisted Bait, so that's why they do end up locking in the Nocturne. I was going to question, like, how confident CDC is playing that matchup in top lane. Like, you think he should be? Because, again, he is a big TF player himself, so he should know how to play the opposite sides of those matchups. But now with the Nocturne, it's going to make it so much easier to just try and farm Flandre up in that top side. Hell, I remember the first time Flandre pulled up the TF earlier in the split. I can't remember who it was against, but... He just ended up getting camped all game long. <laughs> and it looks like Weibo hoping to pull off a similar strategy. And with the Wukong Ooh. there, it is, again, really strong team fighting uh, coming out from their four-man core, but also having the, the potential side lane pressure really on from the TF if they yeah. don't have to worry about the paranoia. And also, Kanavi on Wukong is just lethal, man. He finds so many ways to kind of path uniquely around using the clone as well. And I I'm very curious at how this team fight setup for JDG is going to look because they do have, a, I feel like, a bar of execution to reach, but so do Weibo on their side. Shaohao is going to have a really kind of weird role in this I regard. I agree. Yeah. Because you look at it, like, he has an easy role uh, in terms of, okay, punish the TF anytime he's splitting, punish TF early on in lane. But once you get late, it's like, all right, you're kind of jumping in alone. And no one should be able to follow you when, again, the cage is getting thrown out mid. You have Cyclone coming in. You like all these huge AOE zoning abilities that are going to make it hard for anyone to be able to follow a Nocturne in. It's so difficult, but it is an important one for Weibo. They finally get the Nautilus. Something that's been banned away against them consistently. They finally have some cohesion to facilitate for their carries, but it might have come a little too 
late. They have gone the distance in both of their series so far. They've staved off the darkness. They have gone to five games and Rosen triumphantly in those fifth games. But this is the first time they find themselves backs against the wall going to a game three. A Weibo who has retooled since we just saw them in the world finals. And now their only hope is a reverse sweep. JDG are looking dominant. And they want to close out here. Those Gios need to give energy to Weibo. Let's hear them one more time. Yo, thank you for backing me up, crowd. My God, those Weibo Gios were insane. And wouldn't it be so poetic if Weibo were able to find a win here? Because then it's like, hey, like, you, you've done the reverse. You've been in the position to be reverse swept. But you haven't, you know, been in a position like this, which mentally is going to be so different. But still, man, that is that is a far cry from being able to happen, which is how, how much better... Uh, than Weibo JDG have looked yeah. in the first two games. I don't think it's really going to get easier here with how the drafts panned out. Uh, but a lot, a lot going to be on Xiao Hu and Xiao Hao coming into this one, right? Because maybe wanting to just outright avoid fights altogether with the double, you know, with the two semi globals they have as compared to just the one global that JDG have. I also will point out Light, of course, is going to be on the on hit bars this time, actually. Let's go! Uh, is not going towards that Lethality route, so is going to just try and be able to match ruling this damage. Well, they take some heavy trades there as well in the ruler, trying to get any advantage you can early is going to be important. Again, the Varus has been providing so much of that versatility, not only the on-hit damage he can provide, but the Chains of Corruption is so big for helping set up from long distance. And that's going to be super important for Weibo, because uh, not only are they going to have to have some really succinct CC chains, they're going to have to find a way to utilize the paranoia from Xiaohao once he gets to level 6. And I think for Weibo, I mean, the plan is going to be very obviously go top. Like, once hit six, go top, take out the TF. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they can apply any pressure earlier to maybe even try and get that ghost off of him. But we're going to see. Chao, of course, did start up towards the top side and is actually making his way up now, but he might run into Kanavi. Oh, no, just because these paths from both these junglers starting on the top side, but we ain't full clear into bot side this time around. We're going for a little bit of cheeky pathing and I'd be spotted out each and really spotting out each other. I love their synergy. You know, yeah. it's, you know they both, both, both have the same ideas. The prep, man. Oh, they both really do have the same ideas. You know that mid lane is super important. The cage comes down. Xiaohu says, no, you're locked in here with me. Throws the rocks down. Weibo yep. and JDG striking in mid lane, but nothing else. Again, that one ward that Xiao just put, getting so much value by spotting Kanavi and then being able to read the play into mid. So it's going to be nice. Now both Xiao are just going to default back down towards their bot side. Is Crisp not going to be able to find that hook? Nice little combo into Yigao in mid lane here. As well. Oh my god. <laughs> He's going to have to TP back after that one. I'm uh, going to miss a couple of the minions too, but JDG having some presence uh, from Flandre on the ZBZ side of the matchup. Do have the continued full clear now for both junglers going down to that side. And I think that is also something I love to see in a, a game three that means so much is Kanavi has had Xiaohao's number, not only like forcing him around the map a lot of the time, but forcing him to plays or being able to shadow him. And this is the first time it feels like Xiaohao is the one that's, you know, kind of shadowing over Kanavi. Yeah, we're going to see now. Again, I think a lot more comes down to, like, how the team is playing for these junglers. And for Weibo, I wonder how much comes down to their coaching as well, right? Because having mm -hmm. Gamey come in, Weibo... Weibo seem like way too afraid to like take certain timings when they have prios look for invades or again around team fights. Then then your classic LPL team looks, especially these guys. I mean, hell, think back to how AL played with Xiao Hao and ZDZ. Yep. Think back to how aggressive you know people like Xiao Hu and Chris have been in the past. So I wonder how much of a, by a byproduct this Weibo style is of Ding coming into the team. Probably a lot. Probably a lot. We're also finally getting a ooh, flash going to be burned by Flantre and not get hit by the chains. Uh, we're getting a Xiao who is feeling a lot more confident on this one because Yagao isn't on a champion that can kind of match roams or be the one first to roam. He's going to be sitting still, and so Xiao who can play a little bit more mobile around that. Yeah, you can see them trying to punish that now in the mini map, actually. It's, oh, oh ZDZ. ZDZ doesn't hit the flash. Q sweet spot. It feels a little bad. 
Oh, he might get punished pretty heavily for that one. Flandre, he's going for it. Oh, he does get it. It's the heal, but it doesn't matter. He walks away. Flandre getting the solo, but he gives it right back. Yeah, so it's a going one for one with the fact that junglers are behind them. ZDZ trying his best to survive with that heal. Me too. Ruler going to take a lot of damage there from the piercing arrow. Chris going to look to lock him down. Uh, it's going to be coming up. Yeah, flash cleanse immediately. Ruler able to play at the knife's edge here. Flash from light. He's going for it. He just needs it. Nice hook. Ho, ho, ho. We said they were one of the best bot lanes for JDG. Well, they have been punished. Flashbacks to that game two in their regular season series where they found the 2v2 kill. Able to do it again here. And we're seeing why Nautilus is taken away from Chris. Because he's able to find the angles. I'm very surprised the turret did not attack him right there. That's hilarious. Uh, Chris able to weave that last anchor in between the minion wave that here to Ruler. Going to be left wanting there and no summoner spells for a while down there as well as the cleanse. So it's going to be very difficult to navigate for them. Yeah, huge, huge for that kill, especially to end up on the light and now him be a big presence that needs to be feared. But we come back up to topside and now without the flash and without the ghost, it becomes a lot harder for Flandre. He has to wait for ZDZ to look for that all in there and then kind of tether him and, and get as much damage on the exit. Chaha doesn't Chaha's have here. ulti. Yigao's here too, though. Yigao, able to roam up, does not know that he's there. Chaha really wishing he had level six right now. And pushing front, Flandre under turret with a pretty big wave. Doesn't feel like there's much of a play here, but they're going to look to force it anyway. They know Flandre doesn't have any summoner spells here. It could be a big play to get ZDZ ahead. There's that destiny pop. Here comes Xiaohu. Classic RNG play being made, but Flandre uses his destiny to safety. And we're four members towards topside right now. I mean, look. We even oh, we bring in more. <laughs> Crisp is here, so both teams up towards the side. JDG look like they want to try and find a fight, but hopefully won't be able to do so in the end. I wonder how much you actually even really want to fight with how weak Yigao especially would be right now, only having that tier. But we're going to replay what happened in the bot lane. Great hook by Chris on, on the ruler. And then Light, I mean, right as far as playing it slow, being more cool down the line in the early game on these trades. But there's the flash, gets the cleanse with the auto and then it's just so great committing the flashes to be able to follow this one no, no. how unfortunate no. poor ruler you know if i was someone i wouldn't even think that hook hits but oh fine. my god but also the flash out of it by missing <laughs> as he gets his adc hooked to death i remember you guys had that the other day we did ADC. we did i can't remember who it was but it was an ash arrow it was oh, hung it was hung yeah hung it was flash. hung yeah. yep so I do think, oh, I do think Scout did want to eat that Ash Arrow the other day. This one, I'm not sure. Well, <laughs> this not, one, I'm not I, sure. don't, I don't think you I want know, back. I know Ruler doesn't want that hook. <laughs> yeah, 100%. He didn't want that right hook at all. Uh, it is going to be Weibo using some of their strength from bot side, some of the presence that Crisp has had on the Nautilus to take their first dragon. They also got all three grubs on the other side of the map uh, before those plays kicked off on top side. So they're looking good on objectives, and that's a far cry from the first two games. Yeah, and even having knowledge, Flandre waiting in that brush probably probably is an inkling that Kanavi's in the area or does not. I don't think he does, but uh, they're going to know now. And <laughs> Kanavi's going to show his face, Cyclone He's to dead. the face, and ZDZ will just go down. JDG pick up their second kill of the game. Yep, nice return by Kanavi, and I'll say it, Mazel. This either has to be a 3-0 or, or a five-game series. We are not having any 3-1s here today. We need, you know, it either needs to be one-sided or go the distance. That's what Weibo are looking for, isn't it? Paranoid. Actually, maybe Chris was looking for that. Uh, he does end up finding it anyways because missing is not level 6 yet, and Light claims it. 2-0 for Light, finally on a sustained damage carry, and this is the style that we wanted to see from Weibo. Give some gold to this guy who's a beautiful carry for your team. Yeah, so fun gold getting funneled onto light for Weibo to where for JDG it's Flandre, right? Even though he doesn't have a ton of kills, we can see the plates he's gotten and especially 30 CS lead. So it's going to be very different games. For JDG, it's going to be about buying time for the rest of their map to catch up with the pressure that Flandre can put on. And for Weibo, it actually might be a little bit about, about accelerating around these neutrals. Uh, so things like the Grubs being up now might be an important timing for Weibo to look for. No paranoia might make it hard. A cooldown early is very difficult. Oh, Xiaohu. There are a lot of people. Oh, 
Going to be stopped there in the end by trying to go through the worst ground in the end. Uh, Shahu makes it alive. He's fine. He knew that was going to happen. He even giggled himself. So, you know, maybe, maybe he even <laughs> still expected. got the smile on his face, man. <laughs> maybe he even expected to go down there. But, yeah, it seems like without Paranoia, just not enough potential threat to look for those grubs. So, JDG going to get even more of a reprieve by being able to pick these ones up, which is especially going to enable... Uh, Flandre having a bit more damage under his belt, but we know the might's not possible for either side. When we get down back to bot side, where I'm sure Weibo will continue to put resources down into, they are going to actually catch out missing here. Shao not going to follow up Crispin and Gage, but they will just get continued pressure down here. They could get some more plates, but more so try to find some kills for Light here if they want to give him some more resources. He's all by himself, okay. Almost uh, maybe stayed a little bit too long. But Crisp and Shao Hao on the roam. This has been a beautiful treasure that Weibo have held to themselves and uh, a strength that they have used in their past. It's been one of those things of when Chris can get his hands on some engage. And again, mostly it's been the Rakan where he's really been a standout. But again, early in the lane, really having a good performance in the Nautilus and just enabling him to hold hands with Shao Hao, make their way around the map. That time hovering, making sure no shenanigans go on in mid lane for Shao, Shao Hu to go for the recall. And we're, uh, we're back to a state of normalcy. No huge gold lead one way or the other. Like we said, Light kind of being up in gold compared to Ruler with those kills, but still a massive CS lead in top and plate lead too for Flandre. And I also want to bring in the conversation about Yigao. He's on the Vigar, uh, a pick that scales into infinity. And that has to be a setup conversation for not only the spacing that he provides, but some of that insurance policy. Cause this JDG team, when it gets to a team fight potential, it is scary. Yeah, they're gonna really need to rely on an advantage or Shaohu and Shao finding just the perfect angle to get on the back line and, and delete someone together. But again, that should be hard against the tools that JDG has available to them. JDG is taking a tussle into Kanavi. He's gonna burn his Cyclone. And paranoia used. Here comes the Weaver's Wall. So this is the kind of combo we want to see from Weibo. They catch out Kanavi. That's big. As Shaohu claims that one. Now Yagao taking some rocks to the face. Flandre finding a yellow card on Shaohu. Chris might find missing. He does take the engage over here. He does have light in the lane. Uh, more plates going down to Weibo's bot side too. Yeah, so this really is getting matched. Again, just teams trading where they are strong. Uh, light now going to go have to go for that reset. But speaking of resets, missing. Doing a great job of being a nuisance. Dragon's coming up in 30 seconds though. So that's the next big place. We really have to look. JDG will have Pryo here first because, like we saw, their bot lane went for a reset first, so they should be able to start looking for vision down here. But the question is if they bring Kanavi over or if they just say, hey, we're not even going to look to contest drag and we're just going to enable Flandre even more on this top side. There are options for them. I think that's one of the deadlier things about JDG is when they have a lot of options, they always pick the right one seemingly. Flandre maybe didn't pick the right option. Oh, oh no, yes he did. Yes, he that did. sidestepping yes, was he clean. Did. Oh my God, I won't doubt you again, Flandre. I'm sorry I wasn't familiar with your game, brother, as uh, we see Dragon already started up by Weibo. The best part is he did that without Ghost because he used Ghost earlier when Kanavi got engaged on, so. That was just, yeah, just playing Andre with their minds. He's got Destiny available, so he can come join this one. TP is there for ZDZ. JDG are positioning around this one to try to contest. Andre's making his way over. He's walking down. Oh, Kanavi's already going on to Shaohu. There is the cage drop, though. Depth Charge going to be used, and Mystic's already out of the fight. Now Ruler is going to have to hop his way out, but Ultra Shock Laser on the back line. ZDZ is there, but Shaohu on the other side has already fallen. ZDZ trying to take down Ruler. Flash coming out of the Zeri. Dragon secured by JDG. Now ZDZ is going to world end his way to a death. And Weibo, they've got to find an exit strategy. It's feeling a little bit like this series holistically. They just can't find a way out. And as darkness settles in, it's all JDG. JDG with the huge mind games and letting Weibo think they had their number in the regular season for the biggest gotcha so far in playoffs. Great team fighting coming out from JDG. And I'm curious about this replay. Did everything just get used? on the Rakan by Weibo? Yeah, yeah, Chains. actually, yep. everything, everything being used in the Rakan, and that leaves it so, once the other members come in, like, what can you really do? Shaohu gets isolated, he's brought down instantly, Ruler is forced to flash, but JDG just did such a better job at staying as a cohesive unit. Again, the 
Ah, the cooldown usage there. Not great from, from Wavo. It just feels really rough because uh, it was a little bit of miscommunication. It felt like on what side of the fight they were fighting on. Uh, Xiaohu being in the pit was a little bit rough, but yeah. we, we said it at the very beginning. You, you, we have seen Weibo mess up in their series, both prior, and that is why we've gotten five games. You cannot mess up against JDG. They will tear you to shreds. Exactly right. I mean, hell, IG looked incredibly vulnerable. They only had beaten one other playoff team, which was BLG. LNG also were incredibly sloppy throughout the season, you know, heavily criticized, especially earlier on for their weak form. Like, there was a lot to exploit there for those teams. But JDG, sure, there have been some flaws. And, like, they don't always have the cleanest wins. But, again, I, I feel like it's it's a fool's errand to, like, not consider JDG a, a top team. They're and they're really playing with the side lane. Like, Quadre is side lane in ZDZ. A tried and true nature of Weibo. Now they're going to try to collapse on a ruler. A death charge does connect. Seismic shove as well. They will sacrifice his life. And Light picks up another kill for Weibo. So they do find one. Uh, that will be a nice reprieve for them. Yigal, of course, not having TP to be able to come down and join any of the action. So, oh, oh, he missed the flash, but he still gets the lockdown anyways. Paranoia is there. They find Flandre on the back line, though, but that fear is not going to be enough. Shaohu's doing some work, though. Finally, they realize that's who they need to target. A double kill for Mystic of all people. And Flandre soloing down Shaohu. Here comes Yagel. You're locked in here with JDG. And ZDZ has to first force his flash out and that is another dominant victory in a team fight from jdg and we stayed even in gold for so long but now two back-to-back -back fight wins for jdg we're up to a 4k gold lead it is looking beautiful again uh, bringing flandre in he was playing things like the tf he, he's someone who can try and counteract that style that wave of plays and i love it i love bringing him in i love what jdg has been doing in the series so far missing did miss but it just fits the name right then they go in and i love what you pointed out here because it starts off great but they realized part way through of wait we need to realign our focus turn on to the one dealing all the damage and that's what they do the target selection there from jdg was really nice laundry deals with him on his own and it's enough for the others to keep running forward to be able to finish this one off zz hoping to be a saving grace but then the cage prevents him uh, from being able to get out easily so he has to use a flash too and i'll just say right now it feels like the air has been sucked out of the weibo side feels like there's not many things going right for them in this series so far and maybe that gas tank is running out of gas right now multiple series going the distance in just a few days and they haven't been able to turn it into wins here against jdg you know what at least they can know in an alternate universe that I decide everything on, they were first place. That's what they can know. You hear that, Weibo? You've always got Lyric. Yep. They are still going to be looking at those second item spikes. They also have the Rift Herald available for Shao Hao to try to take down one of these turrets. They still have not been able to crack an outer just yet. They've already lost two of them so far. There is another dragon coming up in about 30 seconds, so they maybe can utilize some of that time that JDG will be taking to take that one to get something on the map. And it looks like that's the plan, right? You can see on the minimap Shao Hao shadowing ZDZ right now on top side, so they're hoping to find a Paranoia play here. I'm actually just going to give the Herald. So we'll see what they pivot this into. Because other members of Weibo are starting to make their way up like Crisp. Nobody's going to drive? Maybe? No driving. You yeah. know what? There, there have been too many car accidents in Summoner's Rift. I can understand it. I wouldn't drive either. <laughs> Well, JDG are driving straight into the tier 2 tower yeah. down here, and uh, they're just going to take that one easy. Xiao Hao is here on the Yigao. Missing's there. The oh my god, Weibo just needs something. You can feel the desperation here. Yigao is the full focus. They are going to take him out. That is a decent amount of gold going over to Xiao Hao. He might actually grab Missing as well. Ooh, oh, that does end up going down. Missing tries to live by an honor code. Is Andre? Might die here. Oh, 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 he's oh, dead he's here. taking the turret shots. Light my baby boy. Look at him go. Are we not stopping? Now Kanavi, we're chasing our show. How? He's speedy, speedy guy. <laughs> Luckily, there's a person that throws rocks right there. A person with a very similar ID right next to him. So you don't know which one. Ah, I see, I see. 
Uh, but that is also something interesting for Weibo, and while they find themselves at a bit of a deficit, it's still a pretty interesting. <laughs> no, <laughs> it is. Uh, it is still something where they are in, in a potential final game for their spring split. But Xiaohu is known as the Tiger King of Spring, right? This guy always shows up. It feels like, and even on this roster where he's having to facilitate a lot for the rest of his team, move out of mid lane a lot of times, I'm still looking at this guy for some huge setups. It was only just last series where they ended the series off the back of one of his Weaver's Walls. And if anybody's going to pull themselves up by the bootstraps, it's got to be him. Yeah, I mean, we definitely can't count them out, right? I mean, like like you said, Shahu has the clutch ability to make plays. Weibo overall have shown the ability to come back. Uh, funnily enough, this is actually number one versus number two in like win rate when behind at 15 minutes. Both these teams are That's incredibly hilarious. good at finding those those ways back into the game. Uh, but it does just look so hard. I will say they minimized the gold lead. At one point, we were up to 4K for JDG, now sitting at you know around 2.5. So some of those picks have paid off. But JDG, they're not stopped looking for picks for themselves. This is Shirelia's second item for you, gal. Love that oh, for him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh. Ooh, Shao gets it. Yeah, Shao able to get away, but I love it. Putting maximum value on just being able to, to help enable his team run Weibo down. Also, you know, relatively cheap item. Uh, Going to set him up for a bit of an earlier power if a fight does break out right now. And we're in another situation where uh, when JDG have control of the map, they will just choke you out. They're giving their best, you know, Darth Vader impression every time they step out on the rift if they have an advantage. And here, they do have an advantage. It's not as much dominant control as we've seen in the last two games, but you can see they're pushing up their vision. They're utilizing a lot of the push and pull of the waves that usually Weibo are the ones that are really good at using. Yeah, and you could tell right now they understand that this is where Weibo might start coming on online a little bit more than them with, like, you know, again, things like Avaris and Talia maybe outpacing the uh, Vigara and the Zeri. So maybe that's why they've been a little bit more hesitant. Of course, not wanting to show up Laundry too early, but they're ignoring the sides now because they see Aatrox spot. They know if they found something, this would be a 5v4. TP is available, but it takes time. Destiny a lot faster. Will end up being popped there without any utilization. JDG were just looking to see if they could catch anybody out. And that's the power of this JDG roster. They can make you mess up, or they can just stay back and let themselves scale. Weibo moving forward. The Baron, Weibo have a they feel like... Though. Yeah, oh, they no, feel like... No, they, they feel like they might be doing it, so they'll move up. Meanwhile, ZDZ able to get something in the side lane, getting a second turret for Weibo. How, like, how interesting to, to bluff baiting Baron and give, give the enemy team three side pressure so they at least end up stealing away the blue, which uh, feels pretty nice. Maybe not feeling confident being able to match that pressure and bot, but I, I guess I'm just surprised because they use the destiny, right? If it was like mm -hmm. if you're going to invest a big cooldown like that, maybe you actually would attempt like actively baiting the Baron instead of just bluffing it and hoping they walk in. But still, not really significant loss. We do see light, though. Uh, yeah. able to finish up his terminus so he's getting even more to a point of power being on his third item to where ruler just sitting on two and a half right now and for weibo when you have that third item for light on the sustained damage bears i think it's really important that we have seen this guy have so much success right he made a huge splash on lng and i, I feel like his time on weibo he's really been able to mold himself into a superstar carry but it needs to happen here we have seen him go lethality so many times he has the sticks now he's on three items and he's gonna have so much to do in the team fights if they want to have an advantage yeah i mean it really is just gonna be a lot up to him uh, and a lot of different roles, right? Because he's going to have to be playing, peeling back, like watching out for the Wukong and the Rakan jumping jumping around on top of him while the rest of his team is trying to get onto the Zeri. So could end up having a very difficult role. Of course, with the Chains of Corruption, as far as you always do have a bit of self-peel to be able to play with. And both teams, for the past few minutes, just avoiding each other. Like ships in the night. Ships that are soon going to crash into each other. A Another dragon coming up this would be soul point for jdg weibo did they use some of their pressure on the top side to maybe pull the attention of jdg themselves towards baron a jdg no weibo are not baiting baron you know what i mean like a jdg have watched the tapes they know <laughs> weibo are not baiting baron nothing else gonna come of it 
Weibo left wanting up there, but they are still looking for things. Dragon still up on the table would be able to tie things up with JDG in that fashion. Looks like they might just let this one go. It feels like it's just so tense because JDG are JDG are playing like, hey guys, we need to win one more game. Like like let's 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 not make mistakes. Let's keep it cool. Let's play it a bit slower. And Weibo, for the opposite reason, doing similar things. Uh, I'm being just very hesitant. And right, I feel like a slower game again. With the carries JDG has should favor them, but Weibo are actually pulling the Baron this time. And Kanabi is nowhere even close, nowhere so they might have near. just given this one up. TP coming in as well. Weibo just slipped the rug, and they went with that sneaky Baron you talked about earlier. Missing, trying to catch somebody out. He went in way too early and just gets soloed out by himself. An Ultra Shock laser came across, but JDG... They can't get Weibo. All the quick backs coming through. Weibo stopped their backs. They actually want to stay. They caught Flandre out. He's going to burn his flash though. Yagao trying to ult down Chris. That primordial burst will not be enough. JDG oh. still looking to stop the backs. Xiaohao stops his. Everyone's and here on the comes, way. Here comes Kanavi. He's on his way to close this trap. Yagao and Flandre leading the way. Ruler is right behind them. Weibo, what are you going to do? You're stuck in a pickle. It might be quick catch 22. They're just standing there staring at each other. Here comes ZDZ behind, though. They are waiting for their Aatrox to get a big flank. They are also waiting for Missy to come in. Everybody's what waiting. Who's going to go to? Everybody's staring at each other menacingly. And Kanavi, he wants the angle. He wants the cutoff. He realizes that Weibo are now desynced. Chris gives his life but he will be the only one to fall in the end. All of that, all of that tension, all of that buildup for one kill onto the support. My God, again, it goes back to neither team. Like, both teams knowing they cannot afford to make a single mistake, it's leaving them hesitant. Way about the big winners though, right? They end up walking away with the Baron. And they still have another minute and a half on that one to try to get some gold back under their belts. They were only about 2,000 gold down. Still just about that. I will say, though, JDG getting that last dragon definitely sets them up in the following dragon fights because they can have a lot of that decision-making power. And the uh, Baron is still going to be a little bit off that spawn, so they can just kind of force a turret fight if they want to. And we also <laughs> think about their scaling coming online. Three items now for Ruler. We're going to be close to three items for Yagao as well. Actually, with... With the way that standoff went, the Baron might not matter that much. I mean, only 58 so. seconds left. JDG standoff actually kind of ended up paying off, and their comp is going to love a Cloud Soul. So now Weibo left at a standstill. Maybe they can at least get one turret off of this. Uh, this mid lane one looks like it. The potential is there, but now with Yagao coming back with another item for himself, having that Banshee. Uh, no, doesn't seem like it's in the cards. Wow. Hesitancy everywhere. And Weibo, and he's feeling it a little bit heavier. Now Flandre almost on four items, as well as he's got the Seeker's Arm Guard there. We'll have a lot of playability around that as well. And Weibo, I, I've seen them doing this in these downtimes. They are just walking around. They are trying to clear some vision down. They, they just, they don't have a centered play. So they're looking to see if they can catch JDG unaware. Oh, but JDG are looking to catch Weibo out. Missing, missing. Going, going the long flank. flank. He's going to the botani botanical garden and taking a nice little stroll through it. Last time, though, he did this. He did get completely caught out and taken down, sacrificing his life. Oh, Here comes Flandre, the destiny. destiny. Uh, I'm not going to follow it just yet. We're just looking where Weibo were. We're just begging for anything, JDG and Weibo. We're begging for anything. He's going bot side. Oh, we're going for the split push. So he doesn't have TP. So this could be a fight where Weibo force their hand, but they need somebody to respond to this bot side wave. I mean, neither team really having any obvious openings. Both teams really respecting the potential angles of where, where the other one could be, right? No one, no, no one overextending, no one walking too deep in the enemy jungle when they know who could be around. Like, Weibo there, no one face checking. And 11 to 11. It's, it's actually it's crazy, crazy how close this game has ended up being. We're a minute away from Drake. This will be sole point for JDG. Again, trying to get that date uh, with a match up against top esports. And that GA. That's the uh, most important part. Getting a double elimination section of the LPL Spring Playoffs is super important. 
Another guy who's been super important for JDG and was a bit of a question mark coming into this series has been Flandre. 5-2-3 and three on the TF. He's on his fourth item now with that Zanyas completed. He has shut down ZDZ, who has been such a strong strength in the past for Weibo, and especially recently in the playoffs. So both teams still kind of just angling for it. Dragon coming up so soon, but JDG are the ones with vision advantage right now. They even have some flank wards, even though they themselves can't really use them. At least potentially be able to spot out any avenues ZDZ or someone would take. To try to make their way around in a fight. Ooh, important, important. Light just finished GA himself. It's not the one that we're looking at to uh, win from this series, but it's super important for him to be able to play with a little bit more confidence. Dragon Soul for JDG started up. <laughs> Yagao is actually chasing down ZDZ. So they're on it. They're doing it. They fast. just burn it. They just burn it. They just get it. Flandre, he's looking on the other side. He's actually looking for ZDZ. Meanwhile, it's completely split. ZDZ is trying to get back to his team, but he's all alone. And Kanavi cleans that one up all day. Missing survives in the four-man engage from Weibo. And there's nothing that Weibo can do. Yeah, Weibo not even really committing to a four-man engage on to missing. Like, I mean, look, didn't even have to flash away or anything. And there it is. There's that, that hesitancy. But again, JDG, nice setup. They get on the objective first. They burn it so fast. The vision that was there, like everything being in their favor. Now we might get to a point to where Weibo just have to full send it and go for a Hail Mary. Go for a big gamble. Or then get on to, hell, I was going to say Ruler, but it's in these fights, it's actually looking like Flandre being the biggest menace yeah. for Weibo to deal with. He does so much ridiculous damage, too. It's so difficult to navigate these fights for Weibo. And they're finding themselves still at about the same gold differential, about 3,000 gold now for JDG. But it's JDG who are already doing the Baron right now, and it's already half health. And, I mean, they have Cyclone. They have the quickness. They have everything they need to turn from this Baron and get an ideal fight. So, looks like Weibo know that they can't contend with this. So, have the Baron can start pushing through these lanes. You're going to have Destiny up soon, too, so it's going to be very easy play through a two-lane setup. Lyric, what do you do when you're hanging on the edge of a cliff and your fingers are slipping here for Weibo? You have to find some saving grace, some inner strength here, because this is a team who have gone the distance two times in a row, and they have to find a way to pull themselves out of this, or they're going to fall off that cliff and go into summer. So you're asking, how do they not fall off the cliff? Ah, you know, they shouldn't have gotten on the cliff to begin with. You know, don't don't walk over to the cliff because I think it's, I think it is rough. It's really going to take some big mistakes out from JDG. I mean, again, you look at the carries that they have on their side. They're, they're still scaling up. They're still getting incredibly strong. You have a mobile carries on Weibo side that, that are so easy to, easy to punish with what JDG have drafted. Uh, feels like Weibo more would have to look back at what they could have done earlier but still someone could overstep you have a bunch of cc on Weibo's side so if ruler or yagal ever walk too far forward you can try to burst them out before anyone can really respond but that's what i'm looking at trying to find a pick side lane turrets falling one after another to flandre though mid lane almost down as well Weibo stuck in the middle if they're gonna go for flandre weaver's wall over as well they might be able to get him but he destinies his way out Oh, man. You just can't catch this guy. He's got a smooth criminal vibe right now. And JDG almost end up finding light under turret. They do get the Chains of Corruption out as well. The Depth Charge, that's a lot used. Oh, oh my God, Ruler. And there's the combo. JDG has smelled the blood in the water for a while now. And Weibo, you've been left wanting. Dry in the desert. Your fingers crack on the edge of the cliff. The Abyss waiting for you below, and JDG crush those fingers one by little one. They have a date with Top Esports, and our third seed is Dominant. Our first 3-0 of the playoffs. Crazy. JDG come back swinging with Flandre on the roster, and it looks beautiful. I gotta say for Weibo, we're down in the dumps together, brothers. We're down in the dumps together. I predict them to win the split, but 
I mean, again, the, the fairy tale was there. They were performing above expectations, honestly, yeah. I think, with how good these good games look. Like, sure, their series before this went to five games, but again, those wins, much cleaner than earlier in the split, but it just could yeah. not keep up with JDG. We've been saying it all split long. Our top three just felt like they were separated from the pack. Sure, FTX looked good, too, but they aren't tried and tested like yeah. these teams are, and JDG really showing, again, that that experience paying off. And if you're a Wavo fan, you should still be proud. I think the fact exactly. that they got 10 games, uh, they was huge. They had a lot of struggles in the regular season. It was a miracle themselves that they were even that uh, able to make it here uh, with all that craziness towards the end. But it's a roster that you expected greatness from. And I think it was a situation where they knew how to play side lane. They had a lot of strength. But we knew them as a team that turned it on macro-wise 25, 30 minutes in. That is JDG's comfort zone. That is how they made it to the top rungs in the world. And with Flandre able to pick out some things to kind of snuff the fire that was ZDZ, it's really huge moving forward into top esports that JDG didn't have to show that much tonight, besides maybe the Vigar and the Rexa. Yeah, which, funnily enough, or even... I mean, things that could easily be, maybe not the Vigar, but again, that's that's something that Gao especially is like, has brought out in the past even when other people weren't. The Rexa, you can just check, check Laundry still if you got. I'm telling you, guy is spamming <laughs> it up a storm. But, and right, that begs the question of how, how much deeper can this go? What other champions do they have in their back pocket? Because now, only three games played, it's the complete opposite of Weibo, where JDG came in today with tons of tape. Uh, and like on both sides, things that, that didn't yeah. work for teams and things that did, and that's how they were able to get this win. TS is going to be a different beast now, having you know a lot of time to prepare. But still, I don't know. This JDG team is going to be a scary team going forward. Yeah. So like we said, this isn't even JDG really at their full power. No, not at all. And uh, that's also just terrifying. It was very clear that their preparation was immaculate, right? Like literally, yeah. they... They just stopped everything from Weibo in that game number one. Uh, a little bit less game number two, game number three, a little bit more leading towards uh, some chaos. But it is something where that preparation, the coaching staff behind JDG is so important. And yes, they will have a little bit of a tighter turnaround into top esports, but it's an opponent yeah. they know well. Exactly right. So, I mean, how both these teams, right, knowing each other well, knowing like the key players. Uh, I mean, having been teammates before, you know, for some players on the <laughs> other side. Always swapping, so. you know, you know, yeah. having a little bit of team. So that one, that one's gonna be big. And again, they are they are in double elim. So the, after that, whether they win or lose, right, getting to see them play against teams like BLG again, getting the Gal versus Knight rivalry continue <laughs> wherever NIP ends up in that equation, and you know, seeing people like.